All I have as an actor is process. All I have is being there on the day, being told where to stand by somebody like Ian and shot by someone like Mike, saying words written by someone like Sadie. When the day finish, finishes, my job's over. This has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Actually, um, in all honesty, this is, this is product. This is something else. Um, this is the wonderful work of Ian and, and editors and uh, composers. and um, So this is something utterly different to why I want to be an actor. But there must be, when you look at stuff that you've done, I mean, I assume you like some of it more I'm here. than others. <laughs> <laughs> and George, I noticed you, um, you, you came in slightly later than the rest, so, and uh, you're relatively new to this profession. So um, the, the question of looking at yourself on the big screen. Um, well, I've, I've, I've seen it already. Um, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen it twice, and I think... I, I always, I've, I always want to see see what the final products like, and I think Greg couldn't have put it better about our jobs there, and then it goes through a further process, and it all comes together into a, a final product. And because you've been part of the early part of that process, of course you want to to see see what it looks like. Um, but it's, I think it's it would be difficult to watch it again and again and again. I think. Um, so, so yeah, so I think you take from it, and it usually takes it more than one watch as well for it not to be completely overwhelming and you just remembering exactly, not thinking about the story and just going, oh, this is what happened that day and you know we were there when that shot happened and this is what happened a few minutes before. So it's nice to kind of get it, get it in your head and, and everything, but then after that, I think it's, then it's kind of letting it go and letting it, other people see it. Yeah. And Ian, um, I've seen writers uh, in public reading from a published hardback and actually making notes as they go, for hopefully for the paperback or another edition, because they're having second thoughts. Do you, when you watch stuff, do you have regrets and second thoughts? <coughs> yeah, there's always bits that you think you'd wish you'd done differently. Recast it back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Recast it, for example. Johnny Depp wasn't um, free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think, you know, what's, what was wonderful about this and uh, you know, I, I read it, read the book very soon after it was published, and wanted to do it immediately. And I think two things happened: is that I felt uh, a, a connection with it immediately with the material, not just the story, but I felt I felt completely connected with the world and the characters. And and I saw the film, and I think that that that's the sort of you know rule number one as a director: when you read something, you have to see it and know that I I actually I actually have this world inside me in some way, or the way that it's communicated to me, and then. Get, you know the difficult bit, particularly with a work like this that I admired so much, is to be uh, is is to do it justice really, and it, it's so elegantly and beautifully written. Um, but there are elements in it in the book that are prose that have to be communicated in a different way, you know, with with sound and music and camera and performances. Uh, so it was it was both very exciting and very challenging, partly because I, I didn't want to um, screw it up. <laughs> and we talked about it coming from a book. Um, Jessica, this is, um, theoretically, if you do a book for GCSE, you have to read it, you're, uh, but you have a choice if you're an actor and you're in um, a film version of a book. So did you read the novel? Yeah, I waited until I found out that I got the job, though, because I didn't want to tempt fate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always read the book, but because Sadie wrote the script as well, um, it didn't feel... Well, I guess sometimes if you do a script and it's based on a book and a different person wrote the script, it's not always right to go back and read the book because it's somebody else's version of that world. But it felt kind of rude not to. And also it was so helpful because <laughs> everything was already there. I, I loved it. I was obsessed with the book after I read it. And we'll, um, <laughs> we'll talk to Sadie a moment about this, uh, Ian, but I've, I've been told that um, adaptations of novels, sometimes writers turn up with the book and insist that other bits should have, should have gone in that have been left out. Yeah, well, um, the <laughs> script was, fair, was, was quite a long way down the road uh, when I finally came on board the two 90 minutes. I, I'd been interested in the, in the single film version and I got to know Sadie, um, but the script was sort of in very, you know, very, very good shape. Um, but I don't think we had any conversations about going, you know, this book from the book. It was really once we looked at the, once we, we started with the script, that was the sort of the, the material that, that we 
we, we, we shaped. But it was, it was, in very, it was very advanced when, when, when I came on board. And Sadie, the structure is an obvious question, because Ian said this film, that it's um, in effect two. You've seen the first half, and then there's um, a second half of the same length. Um, it's almost like a theatre interval. Uh, in a way, uh, where to take. So you, the, once it became two, uh, two 90 minutes, the big question was where to divide it. Yeah, uh, well, the, the second half, you know, has, has dancing and fun. And <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that at all. Um, <laughs> Gilbert was, has a song. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, it, because in effect, it's too, I mean, for people who haven't read the book, and it's not a plot spoiler, because it starts off, um, the book starts off with him coming out of prison yeah. and then flashes back, which actually is an incredibly common eye. I was very glad you haven't done it. It's perhaps a too common TV device where you see someone coming and then it says, um, however many years earlier. Well, like you've done his two quite separate stories in a way. To be sort of crass about the, the structure decisions, that there was two ways to go really, it would be either kind of weaving in the, the, the past to his having come out of prison, or it was to have his younger life and then to have the, the second part be his, his out of prison. And when I wrote it, originally it had been a screenplay, and the screenplay had been the, what's really the second half of the book, which is his, the three weeks when he comes out of prison. So in, in re-adapting it, when it was going to, meant to be a single film, I kind of knew that there was easily enough story and incident to fill two hours anyway. So then it, it was always awkward shoehorning in his, his childhood. So it, it was a lot cleaner. We, we worked a lot. We talked a lot about, about flashback stuff, and there, there have been <laughs> versions of it that did that. But in the end, it, it was awkward. And I, I think that it, was, it, it fell quite naturally once it was two 90 minutes. It fell quite naturally into that shape. Also, having seen both, it's, <clears throat> I, I like the neatness of it because it start, each episode starts with a return. Mm. You have the father returning from mm. the war and then you have the boy. Well, we know he's in jail at the end of this one, don't we? So you, you have him returning from jail. So it's perfectly symmetrical like that. I, I was surprised, actually, that I preferred this version, which was, which was a linear narrative, because I read the... Uh, obviously, the book starts, as you said, mm -hmm. with, with uh, those coming out of prison... Uh, which was seen to be a more filmic way of approaching it. And it was more conventional, I, th I thought, before I read the two scripts. But I just think it, it worked, because we, we do move through the generations and through the, through the ages, so that I think it allows us to engage emotionally with the characters much more, because we're sort of growing up with them. But I was also struck that if, if you just seen it as a film or just read a screenplay, it's, it is fantastically visual, obviously, Sadie, because it goes from fire to water, the episode we've just seen. But, um, I mean, that's all there in the book, but did, because you've written screenplays, um, do you think visually in that way when you're writing novels? Well, I, I, I don't know any other way of thinking. So when people sort of say, oh, you have a visual imagination, I think, what, what other imagination do we have? Well, I can give you some books where <laughs> there's, no, there's no visual imagination at all. I, I think, Maybe some films as well. Yeah, you're yeah, quite, yeah. I mean, <laughs> all, all you have is words, so I, I, but I, I try to create as full a world, as complete a world as possible, and then it's reporting that world. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm pleased. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah. And um, George and Jessica, but you were playing um, uh, in a period uh, long before you were born. So were they? And me? No, Greg, not long. <laughs> was it long before? Shush. Well, <laughs> was anyway, question. the question was correct. Long before you were born. So were there emergency sessions where they explained this is a call box that you're going to be standing <laughs> next to and that, um, well, that well, kind well, of stuff? I mean, does it seem it's quite a distant world, isn't it? Greg was really helpful for research. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was, uh, no, I think it was as much as the sort of practicalities of that world, it was kind of getting a sense of... Um, I, emotionally, is quite a broad word for you know a decade, <laughs> but um, but the the way that sort of that um, society and it's kind of and then kind of narrowing that down so kind of uh, post-war England uh, and then that area of post-war England and then that sort of village within that area of post-war England and kind of and just getting a sense of how that would make you feel and it sort of I think it was 
my sort of understanding of it was it was meant to be a time that we, where everything was, which is kind of reflects what's a lot of what happens in the story where everything on the surface is fine. You know, we're through this awful time with one. You know, everything should be on the up, but there's a lot of things that haven't been addressed that until they're addressed, they're going to be equally as damaging. Um, and that seemed to reflect, you know, what was going on with the characters in, that we were portraying. So it, I think they just mirrored each other very and Jessica, do you think of it when you're playing something like this as costume drama, as, as period drama? What do you mean? Well, I mean, the, what do you mean it, think about it? Yeah, it, well, no, in terms of um, if you're playing in a contemporary piece, it's very close to uh, the world you live in, but this is much further away, so I just wondered your no. attitude. Oh, you mean, like, do I think about the fact that, like, I was in the 40s or the yeah. 50s? No, not really, because then... It, I guess it falls into the same category of like if you play younger, do you think about being younger? I don't really think about those things because you wouldn't think about it if you were that person at that time. I maybe think about it for like a few weeks before I start filming or maybe when I'm not on set, but I definitely don't think about it when I'm actually doing the scene. Although, um, Sadie and Ian, it always strikes me, and indeed Greg, it always strikes me with period drama, the hardest thing is to get into how people thought then because the entire mindset is different. I mean, we live in a world where teenagers are it's in permanent communication and so on, and it's just getting that sense of how different it was. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I never think of it as period drama, and I, I, I think that it, it's that the time is, is expressing the, the experience of those people or the relationship of those people, the attitudes of those people, that it, 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 the people aren't describing the time, that the time, the setting, the village, all of it is just describing that you know, where best to tell this story, and the 50s was the best place to tell it because they, these particular people are repressed and damaged, and I, I don't, I, th I think these things, exactly these things are going on all the time, and this is, this is completely normal. So I, I wasn't, it wasn't an indictment of the 50s, the 50s were, were telling that family. It was sort of the, I, that I have a around. slightly different perspective, to <laughs> <laughs> um, which, is a, which is sort of a double one, really. I agree with Sadie, and uh, you know, I've done a couple of period films, I've always had the same attitude. I haven't wanted to sort of present them as something that's a museum piece, and to say, <coughs> so the audience says, look how different it is from us. I'm always looking for, look how similar it is, and what are the points of connection. And that, you know, when I talk to the actors, it's, it's happening now, and I want the audience to feel that this is happening now. But I think there's a sort of almost a, a sort of a counterpoint to that, which is very interesting. And particularly in this, in the book and the script and the film, which was one of the things that appealed to me, was that it is a very interesting time. I mean, particularly for this story, which is about intimacy and the inability of people to connect and to express their emotions when they should, so that they repress their own emotions, they don't they don't respond to the need for, for comfort and empathy in other people. And it was a kind of moment where, where really the end of the Second World War, the Edwardian era was still uh, upon us of sort of hypocrisy and repression. And I remember Sadie telling me that you thought the 50s was a long drawn out foreplay for the orgasm of the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it is important. Yeah. No, it, no, is, it yeah. is important. But that's what I was getting at. I was going to ask Greg about this because um, I noticed um, when we were waiting to come on stage, you saw um, George and you, uh, you hugged him. Now, that's not just with your actors, but fathers and sons do that mm. now. Whereas there's a scene in the episode we just saw where he leaves his son at school and there's that astonishingly stiff, and you know, he just touches him slightly. And that is important, isn't it? Because people, body language was different, the way people spoke was different, the way they dressed, and you do have to get that in well, something like this. No, absolutely, utterly. I, what I always enjoy about acting in pieces that are, that are set um, not in present day are all the things you're not allowed to do. Because we can do anything we want now, anything at all, in 2015. Because if you took out a mobile phone in this, I mean, it would play yeah, the whole Yeah, but box. back then, <laughs> here is a man whose father was a Victorian. Oh. It's that simple. Mm. And he was given no emotional vocabulary from his father. He went the same route through school into a job, as he hopes his son will do. He just, he hasn't got the words at all. Um, he's not a bad man. He's not, he's not evil. He just cannot access, cannot get past his grief to start with. I think now, hopefully, one would go and see a grief counsellor, there would be a counsellor for the child, things would somehow be able to be brought out into the open. There was none of that then. Stiff upper lip, stop that, get on with it, put your head down, work through it, it'll all be fine. 
Um, and this is a beautiful three-hour playing out of mm. It Is Not Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but even, even the way you uh, speak is, I mean, if you hear um, radio, TV programmes from the time, I mean, you've done it. I mean, it is, even the way people move their mouth is slightly stiffer, the whole mm. thing, isn't it? The way that people it's, speak. It's precision. Mm. It's precision. You, you, you say what you mean and you say no more than what needs to be said. Um, we're all umming and ahhing and liking and you know and basically and actually none of that. Mm. I was I was quite a hound on set with the young people saying. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and I um I'd read the book Sadie, but I watched um it with somebody who hadn't, and they asked what I thought was really an interesting question, and um, particularly about the state of TV now. They were saying early on, what genre is this? Is this <laughs> is this crime? Is this romance? <laughs> is this a sort of Ruth Rendley thing? And I thought that was really interesting because we're so used to knowing what genre we're in on TV. And actually, I genuinely think with that, you have no idea. And then in the second one, we're actually into a slightly different one. So I was fascinated by that. But was that ever discussed, genre? No, no. I think that says more about thing, you know, what we're, we've all become so used to uh, these labels. The gen genre used, there was genre and then there was just drama or there was just literature and then there was genre writing. And now drama seems, it, it's unusual. Which is sort of sort of awful. Yeah, because I mean, I also I recommend anyone looking for summer reading Fallout, which is um, Sadie's latest novel. But you you you're, you're writing. I mean, a drama. I mean, sort of psychological drama, really, is what he writes, isn't it? Yes, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bloody comedy. <laughs> <laughs> there are laughs, <enoughs. laughs> because people do horrible things. Yeah. <laughs> and Ian, before we open it up, you, you as a director, when when you look at the script. Um, I mean, clearly there are set pieces, the, mm. the drowning, the burning church, and do you think, wow, that's going to be... I mean, are you, you're aware of the big moments you're going to have to bring off. Yeah, I'm, I'm, obviously I looked at those. I mean, the, the, the fire isn't such a, an issue because there are very talented people that uh, um, you know, provide a lot of, a lot of help in, in you know, special effects, visual effects, and it's quite fun to do. Um, uh, but the drowning I knew because it was such an intense, dramatic moment and it was going to be very, very difficult for the actors. Um, for ha Hattie, I think Hattie's here actually, Hattie, who plays Hattie wonderful Moran. Hattie Moran, who plays oh, yeah. Elizabeth. Um, <laughs> it, 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 was, it was really, that was one of the scenes I thought the casting of the, of the actor, the young actor and the casting director, um, Kate Rose James is here, did an amazing job uh, with Daniel, her, her associate. And so I thought those things, I thought those are really important to, to get right. But at the same time, um, as well as the book seeming to be naturalistic uh, and for the, my, my job to kind of create this world in a very, uh, in a very naturalistic way, I, I saw immediately, when, even when I read the book, and, and one of the things that I loved about Sadie's screenplay was that she sort of gave permission for, the, for if you like, the interpretative elements, um, the soundscape, the uh, sort of impressionistic visuals, uh, the importance of the setting, the location, the choosing, uh, the, the whole photographic, oral, mu musical side of it. And, and that, to me, was one of the things that really appealed to me. I knew that you know, there was a job to do. Um, and it was, you know, it was very, very inspiring and, uh, um, and, and challenging and, and, and enjoyable. And certain TV critics are notorious for comparing um, films to paintings, but it's, I mean, you know, about pre raphaelites but I mean, it's very, very death of Ophelia, the drowning scene, I thought. Yeah, was well, that that's, deliberate? That's, that, that's in all our minds, I think, somewhere, isn't mm. it? I mean, anybody that's uh, seen that, that, uh, that painting, it, mm. it, it doesn't go away. Mm. Um, absolutely, yeah. 